Hi, and welcome to another guide on DCSA 10. First off, I want to thank everybody for the kind words and feedback I've received from the other ones I've done, as well as your suggestions. So let's continue landing fundamentals. Now that we've got the basics out of the way, I'm going to spend most of this video demonstrating how to deal with a crosswind when landing in DCS. It's helpful to be able to land without wind, but usually there's going to be some sort of wind condition. You always want to land into the wind, but you're never guaranteed a complete headwind. Instead, we're often left in a situation where the wind is blowing across the runway that we want to land on. There are two solutions that we have in order to deal with a crosswind. The first is the wind correction angle, or crab angle. Crabbing involves adjusting your heading so that as you fly through the air, the course that your airplane takes along the ground is adjusted to compensate for the wind. You can use the total velocity vector, that little airplane on the HUD, to get the appropriate heading to compensate. Crabbing works fine until we get to final approach, where we need to have our nose oriented more or less along the center line of the runway. When we're about to land, we have to transition into a side slip. The side slip allows for the aircraft to compensate for wind while orienting correctly for a landing. In this example, we're just about to turn onto our final approach to runway 3 left at Nellis. Wind is out of the east at 30 knots. That's going to give us a crosswind component of about 26 knots, and that's what we're going to have to work against while we land. As a note to mission editors, you want to make sure you convert your units appropriately, since the units displayed in the editor are not going to be in knots. You also want to make sure that you know where the wind is coming from, because in the editor, it's always going to be set according to where it's going to. And I'm going to drop my gear here, get everything adjusted for final. And at this point, I know there's a crosswind, so I'm going to use the total velocity vector to get me onto the runway. And as I slow down to my approach speed, which is once again going to be roughly 120, the amount that I'm going to need to crab is going to increase. Right, we're getting pushed off to the left just a little bit. Now you'll notice here I've crabbed so much that the total velocity vector can no longer be displayed in the location that it actually would be on the HUD. And when that happens, you're going to see a little arrow through it pointing in the direction that it would be. When you see this arrow, don't trust it to be exactly on the location that your airplane is headed towards. Dropping down just a little bit more with my velocity. I think what may happen with this is I may touch down just to the left because I haven't really crabbed enough. Okay, before we go any further, I'm going to pause it and show you how to do the side slip. You can't touch down while crabbing, so before you land, you need to side slip by banking into the wind and applying rudder in the reverse direction. Adjust the controls until you're oriented straight along the runway center line. Let's resume the approach. Continuing approach. See if we can't get right on the center line here before we have to do the slip. Altitude, altitude. Now while you're doing all this, you still have to watch your pitch, your throttle, and your glide slope position. Okay, I'm going to start the slip a little early, bank into the wind, get that rudder going so the nose is right along the center line. Flare, gently, touch down just like before, and follow the same rollout procedure just like we did before. And what I'm going to do here is taxi onto the first available taxiway to the right once I'm slow enough to do so.
One last thing to keep in mind about the crosswind landing is that the wheel on the banking side is going to touch down first. That's normal. Don't be afraid of it. Here's a replay showing what we just did, and always make sure to concentrate on your flare and touchdown while this is going on. I also promised you the formula for crab angle. Here it is. Now this isn't something you need to memorize, but it is used to calculate the appropriate crab angle for a given wind direction and speed. Whether it's being done automatically for you, whether you're doing it by hand, or whether it's being done with a flight computer such as an E6B. Alright, so let's do an aborted approach. Honestly, aborting an approach isn't that hard. It's the decision to abort and making it at the right time that can trip you up. Alright, so you can see here I'm being blown off the runway just a little bit and I'm also very slow. Altitude, altitude. At this point I don't think that I have enough speed to initiate my slip. So what I'm going to do is drop pitch just a tad to gain speed, put full throttle, speed break, speed break. and then clean up my aircraft. I'm going to bring my flaps up, bring my gear up. And that's an abort. It basically comes down to, when in doubt, abort, go around, try again. No harm done. If you abort when you have to, you'll get a second chance. If you don't abort when you have to, you won't. Simple as that. 